interviews on crypto blockchain with your host blockchain wing on ftc hey everyone welcome and thanks for watching today we're joined by enal now enal i'm excited to have on the show today he is a developer advocate uh, for waves and also a member of the waves association uh, you're gonna learn more about the waves project but first and foremost Enal, thanks for joining us today thanks for having me today it's a pleasure to talk to you absolutely like i said I, like i said i'm excited to hear more uh, about your story and more about waves it's been a project that i've been a fan of for a while um so you know first and foremost tell us a little bit about your background and what got you into into the cryptocurrency space uh, uh with waves yeah, uh, thanks for having me again. And my name is uh, Inal, as I already said, uh, I'm developer advocate at Waves. And uh, uh, actually, I started uh, working or playing with blockchain uh, like six years ago in 2015. Uh, I was working at university and also starting there. And uh, uh, blockchain was one of the fields fields which was like very interesting for me because I'm a, I, I have a tech background I'm a developer and uh, blockchain as a technology was very interesting and one of the first coins I started just playing with was Dogecoin <laughs> it may be pretty fun that uh, Dogecoin was it, it was easy to start not like Bitcoin and uh, yeah, and at that time also I was a co-founder of, uh, no, later, just a year later, I was a co-founder of uh, a startup. Uh, we were building some stuff for, it, it was a SaaS platform, like uh, for event organizers. And even there we tried to use blockchain because, uh, you know, NFTs or tokens for tickets, it was a hot topic in 2016, 17. Uh, it was pretty successful, uh, but later I decided to leave and I just got very, very good offer from Waves team. Uh, the team was pretty small at that time. I guess it was around 30. Uh, and uh, yeah, I joined them as a developer advocate, not just as a developer, but as a developer advocate. It's a person who uh, writes some code. It's around 50% of his time. And 50% uh, is more about talking about uh, uh, code about helping other developers to build something and uh, yeah, you know uh, uh, Conferences events all this stuff. It's it's all for developer advocates. So yeah, I joined waves in 2018 and since then uh, Like many things happened in crypto, you know three years. It's pretty pretty much uh, and yeah that, That's my background with the crypto. Awesome. 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 Well, that's some great stuff. Yeah. Um, so you were working with Dogecoin back when there was still some development going on too, right? It hasn't really been a whole lot going on there from a development standpoint, even though uh, it's been getting a lot of attention lately. Yeah. So well, let's, let's move over and let, let's talk some more about waves, you know, um, waves is something like I mentioned before, I've been a fan of for a while. Um, a lot going on with there. I've seen a lot of development over the years. Uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, Waves and, and kind of what, you know, what Waves' is, um, goal and purpose is, is out there. Yeah, actually, this is a very good question. Thanks for the question, because what is Waves? It's, it's, um, it's really hard to answer in one sentence. Uh, the shortest answer would be Waves is an, eco is an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, and it consists of uh, four main products, I would say. The first product is the Waves protocol itself. This is just like, a, it's a blockchain, a proof mm -hmm. of stake blockchain with some unique features like uh, leasing. It's, it's staking, but it's leasing um, uh, with the features like non tuning complete smart contracts language called Write, which is very, very uh, secure, let's call it so. And it helps developers to build uh, secure and robust dApps. Uh, this is like the first thing, uh, protocol itself. Uh, the next thing is Waves Exchange. Waves Exchange is, um, it's an exchange. It's a decentralized exchange. Uh, uh, maybe some, some of your uh, listeners or watchers, they have heard about Waves DAX. It was Waves DAX a couple of years ago, but now it's called Waves Exchange. Um, it has all the features of decentralized exchanges with uh, it's the only thing it's uh, it doesn't has on chain um uh you cannot put your orders on chain it's off chain um uh, placement but uh, yeah anyway don't want to go too deep uh, about waves exchange we will talk about it a little bit later yeah so waves exchange uh very fast but very very cool uh exchange 
Uh, that's the second thing. The third thing is Neutrina protocol. It's a protocol for uh, stable assets, let's call it so. And uh, uh, of course, the most uh, popular stable asset is USDN or Neutrino USD uh, with more than uh, 300 million uh, USD issued right now, as far as I remember. Uh, and uh, fourth thing is um, Gravity. Gravity is blockchain agnostic protocol for like interchain communications. It is not a part of Waves ecosystem actually because Gravity is uh, like token less and blockchain agnostic. So there is no token for Gravity. This is just support by the waves, supported by the waves team and uh, the waves association because uh, like, like grants and uh, we support the team. We help we help them to build the product, but it's a separate team working on the gravity. Uh, and we truly believe in uh, interchain and interchain DeFi in the future. So uh, we, we help to build gravity. So these are four main things. Uh, there are different products on the in the Waves ecosystem, like for example, Swapify. It's an AMM on uh, Swap on, on the Waves blockchain. Uh, this is like the, one of the most interesting projects because AMMs are it's a hot topic right now. There are projects uh, build, building something around NFT, for example, Signature Chain. But yeah, it's more about uh, products on top of the chain, on top of the protocol, but four main things in the ecosystem. It's the blockchain itself, waves exchange, uh, neutrino and gravity. Like I tried to uh, to answer your question, but it's a little bit, compl maybe it sounds a little bit complicated. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a great, and we can, we can dive into some of those. Um, the waves DEX was one of the first uh, decentralized exchanges that I used uh, back, yeah. you know, back when it was out. So definitely some great stuff. And, and, you know, people, I wanted people to know that Waves is more than just, I think Waves is just a, a, a coin that's on, on, a, on a price list, you know, another cryptocurrency. And it's so much more than that. So, and that's what really people need to look into when you're looking at, at projects is what does the project envelop, not just what is the coin or token. Uh, and I think people miss that uh, a lot. So um, on the roadmap for Waves, what, what do you see as... Um, some of the biggest developments. I mean, you mentioned a lot when you just answered that question. What do you think are some of the biggest developments that's going to bring more people to Waves as they find out about it or will interest them to go check it out? Yeah, actually, we truly believe in uh, interchain. So we think that uh, uh, building a maximalist, I don't know, uh, Ethereum or Bitcoin Max, it sounds a little bit strange in 2021 because uh, there are many cases, there are many chains, there are many users. and um, not, maybe not uh, every user, but many groups of users, they want different things. Some of them want real decentralization. Some of them want a little bit less decentralization because decentralization is not like a binary thing, true or false. It's a scale, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, yeah, we truly believe that different groups of users uh, need different um, tools and different protocols. And uh, for example, whales, they're maybe good to use Ethereum with uh, fees around, I don't know, 20, 50 or 100 bucks, but uh, retail investors, let's call them so, they need much lower fees, for example, so they can use uh, Waves, Solana, I don't know, Binance Smart Chain or, or anything else because they're much cheaper in terms of fees. So we truly believe there are different groups and uh, there should be place for uh, different chains, right? And uh, one of the things that we work uh, mostly right now is interchain interchain communications and gravity protocol um which is already said uh like blockchain agnostic thing we have many partners uh, they're helping us to build the uh, gravity protocol and uh, we truly believe in a couple of years we will have uh like not one chain not two chains but i don't know 12 chains with great user adoption with uh, mass mm -hmm. adoption uh and um not 12, 12, uh, 20 chains with uh, mass adoption. And uh, uh, we want to connect all of them. We want to connect all of them in a decentralized way. And we want to connect them without any new tokens like, hey, let's introduce one new coin. No, we, we do not want to go that way. We just want to build the, the protocol and let users uh, use, I don't know, one product in the Ethereum network, take their money from the product, go to, I don't know, Waves network and uh, use their money there. So yeah, 
that's what we mostly work on. And also, yeah, Waves Exchange, even Waves Exchange work on uh, interchain DeFi, as they call it. Uh, for example, they have uh, different gateways, centralized, decentralized gateways for, uh, for example, Ethereum assets. So uh, before Waves was just uh, like a coin in the um, Waves blockchain, on the Waves blockchain, for example. Mm -hmm. Now there is an ERC-20 uh, coin like for waves for neutrino it's the same for uh, neutrino governance token it's the same so they are there are uh waves on the waves chain waves on ethereum in the future we will see waves on binance smart chain and so on and so forth so th this is what we believe in like interchain and let just let users decide where they actually want to use your uh tools or your your coins or whatever nice nice so um to to get to the like you said it's on it's an erc20 now to get to that will the users have to um is there a swap protocol or do they have to buy it on the er on the well, actually ER? actually both of versions exist because waves you can use native token in the waves blockchain and if you want to go to ethereum for example there is a gateway for okay. on the wave six change you just you can go to ethereum network or from the ethereum network to waves network so yeah. Awesome. I mean, that's good to know. I think a lot of, um, you know, Ethereum has brought a lot of users to to the play, you know, to the table. But it's important to also realize that you're right. Uh, the biggest thing I see complaint lately is just gas fees, you know, and you, yeah. you mentioned that as well. Someone's someone's swapping thousands and thousands of dollars of value. A thirty forty dollar gas fee doesn't matter. But if you're, uh, you know, if you're trying to buy a little bit, it, it could uh, it can really impact someone's profitability and in, in, in those trades so that's important not only that i mean um you know a, as you expand so you mentioned nfts earlier right yeah uh, yeah i uh i was looking to uh i had created a bunch of nfts a few years ago on engine and i was looking to to move some of them around and just the cost to move them was worth more than the, the nft itself uh, so, so yeah, yeah that that that's why we actually built our uh, protocol because we truly believe that Ethereum there are issues with scalability there are lots of problems and at some point maybe they will solve it but not in the nearest future unfortunately or fortunately so yeah we truly believe that we can give another option just use Waves blockchain which is faster which is cheaper in terms of fees and yeah that's that's what we actually believe in uh, i would say and what what we want to build like give people an option to yeah. Yeah, yeah not not only ethereum or not only bitcoin yeah nice nice i think some people may not realize they think just fees are high and they don't really understand why it's it's network congestion it's scalability um so what makes the waves chain different in that aspect so what if all these users shifted from Ethereum to Waves, which I know, I mean, it's, that's a hypothetical question, but um, how is the scalability um, with the Waves chain? How are they set up to scale? Yeah, uh, so uh, I can uh, tell a, a short story. Uh, in 2016, as far as I remember, there was a there was a paper called Bitcoin NG from uh, I mean Gun Surer, who is um, founder of Avalanche uh he published a paper um and uh, this paper describes how you can uh make bitcoin like 10 times faster or even more i do not remember exact numbers for bitcoin yet but uh yeah. if that proposal would be implemented the Bit bitcoin network would be 10 times faster but uh bitcoin you know their their position like Bitcoiners, so we are fine with the current design. Satoshi was the best designer of blockchain ever, so we are not going to change almost anything. And they decided not to implement Bitcoin Engine. Of course, there are some trade-offs for Bitcoin network. Uh, so yeah, the reason not only the reason was not only because we don't want, but there are some trade-offs. Anyway, they didn't implement Bitcoin NG, but we implemented it in 2017. So uh, we, our protocol is, uses the thing which is called Waves and G. So I'm not going to talk about uh, tech details because there will be too too uh, too many details, I guess. Uh, but uh, the main idea is that we have blocks uh, every minute. We have micro blocks every five seconds. Uh, we have very good uh, network propagation protocol. We have uh, smart contracts. Uh, they are non-Turing complete. And uh, we 
um, implemented them that way intentionally because we do not want to have same issues as Ethereum has because our smart contracts are pretty simple, they're fast, uh, they're secure, but uh, yeah, sometimes it's maybe a little bit harder for developers. So the easiest way would be just to take, I don't know, EVM, Solidity, and let developers, okay, now you can make smart contracts on the, on the Waves chain, use an EVM and Solidity. But it is not so scalable as uh, write and non tuning complete smart contract, smart contracts language. So we decided to go that way. Uh, and yeah, these are like two factors why uh, Waves would be uh, much faster than Ethereum. The first one is... Uh, Bitcoin NG or Waves NG. Yeah. Uh, and the second one is uh, smart contracts, non tuning complete smart contracts language. So, awesome. yeah, this awesome. is like two things. Cool. That was a great explanation. Yeah. I just wanted people to simply understand because I think a lot of people don't really understand why the fees are high. They just, especially new people coming in, they just see uh, fees are high and why different chains are able to have different, you know, different uh, lower fees. Uh, such as waves can can give you a you know a better solution that's more user friendly because that's what it's going to take to break down the barriers. Um, you know, honestly, there's only going to be so many like you mentioned whales. There's going to be so many whales that will be using these protocols, but there's going to be a lot of end users that are not dealing with with huge amounts. But that's who we need to really drive adoption and, and use. Uh, so it looks like waves are definitely doing that. Well, actually, uh, I don't know, have you ever heard about the mantra of waves? It's a blockchain for the people. That was the mantra of waves. Like we are building not for whales, but for for mass adoption. Awesome. Yeah, that, that's that's a great, great topic. So uh, as we're talking about people, so um, where can people get more information about waves, waves protocol, waves exchange, all, all the great information that they would need to connect with waves and the waves community? Well, uh, there are a couple places. The first place, obviously, is Twitter. So Waves Tech. Yeah, you can find it at Waves Tech on Twitter. Uh, you can find many details about like, all the announcers, all the partners, all the tech details. Uh, everything is published on Twitter. That's the first place. But if you want to discuss, not just uh, read or see some links, but if you want to discuss and maybe ask some questions, then the best place is uh, Telegram. So uh, there are different chats in Telegram. There is a chat for developers called Waves Dev, or you can use just uh, Waves Tech. You can find by Waves Tech. It's just like general chat where you can uh, answer your questions uh, about like, um, you can ask your questions about anything. I don't know, uh, from price to tech details also, but yeah. Uh, Telegram is the second place. And I would say the last, um, place is YouTube because we publish uh, some videos, we have streams where we discuss some topics. For example, just a couple of days ago, we had a stream about NFTs, for example, which is very hot right now. So yeah, you know, we have like two weekly, uh, bi-weekly uh, streams uh, usually we, where you can uh, ask your questions and we would be happy to answer all of them. So yeah, three places, Twitter, Telegram chats and uh, YouTube. Everywhere just search as Waves Tech and you'll find it. Awesome, awesome. So my, my next question, maybe my last question, but we'll see where this goes. But um, as far as the roadmap, I'm sure you know every project has a roadmap of what, what's to come. Um, as far as what's, you know, what's planned in the future that you can talk about, what do you think is the biggest thing that, um, that we can look out for for Waves? Uh, and also some information about, uh, you mentioned NFTs. Uh, so I do have a question about that too after, but what, what's, what's the biggest thing next on the roadmap? Um, I would say the biggest thing now is Neutrino, which is uh, like stable assets protocol, let's call it so. Uh, it is uh, growing with a very, very, very good, uh, let, let's let's call it, traction is pretty good uh, because uh, the number of issued uh, neutrinos it's growing the the number the for example on curve uh, on the Ethereum network there are more than three hundred million locked and uh, yeah that's pretty pretty good numbers for stable assets it's in top ten of uh, stable assets not not um, algorithmic stable assets but. Uh, this, this is in top 10 of all stable assets, not only algorithmic, let's call it so, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think Neutrino is the, 
is the shit. Right. <laughs> uh, that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing, which is like from, from the waves, I think we will release this month, later this month, or only May, we will release a feature which is called continuations. It's very, very interesting tech topic if there are any developers in your community. Uh, that's like um, a new new way how smart contracts are executed, where a smart contracts can, smart contract can, can be paused for example, if it's too complex and it can be resumed in the next block. So it's something absolutely new. So I've never heard about any blockchains doing um, such a thing. So this is like the next big thing and it will improve developers experience for sure. Um, so yeah, these like the two main things I, I would say, which will like, which, which sounds interesting, looks interesting. And uh, I think in the next couple of months, we will get more traction in terms of developers or Neutrino users. Awesome, awesome. So um, what would be the biggest benefit of, of, of pausing smart contracts with the continuation protocol you mentioned? Actually, we are uh, trying to solve uh, the issue with scalability. We do not want to have, we do not want to have uh, problems as Ethereum has. But at the same time, we want smart contracts to be, uh, let's call it not so lightweight as they are right now. So we say, okay, you can write complex smart contracts, but the only thing is that, for example, if it's too, uh, too hard to compute to calculate it right now on the chain, then it can be paused and it can be resumed in the next block. So uh, this is like the main idea. So um, we're just splitting complex smart contracts into several pieces and uh, yeah, r run them in uh, several blocks. That's the main idea. Awesome, so that'll allow um, probably more, more development within smart contracts, probably unlock a lot more capabilities, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Awesome, awesome. So. Uh, next thing I wanted to ask real quick. So non fungible tokens, NFTs, you mentioned, um, I know it, it's a, it's a hot topic right now. It's everywhere. Uh, we're having any, uh, a crypto event in Miami next week and the biggest draw is the NFT crowd. So what, um, what can people do, uh, as far as, uh, looking at or creating NFTs on the waves chain right now? Like what, what's available as resources? Yeah. So, um, there are a couple of projects uh, building some, something or interesting thing is around NFTs. The, the biggest project, as far as I know, is called Signature Chain or Sign Art. Uh, yeah, Sign Art is the proper name of it. Uh, they build an NFT marketplace uh, for uh, like about everything is about art. Uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 I cannot uh, talk uh, much about Sign Art. I just don't know enough about it. I just want to highlight that uh, there are like uh, more than a couple hundred of artists right now. They're selling that there's a primary market right now. I'm not sure about the secondary market uh, yet, but yeah. Uh, and uh, the biggest bid I've seen there is uh, 600K uh, for, for a picture of a duck. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, ducks are like mascots in the wave second system right now. So uh, yeah, um, the, the project is pretty interesting. Uh, I would recommend to visit their website, uh, Telegram chats. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Um, Regarding NFTs, we have launched like in last week. We have launched an NFT game, uh, which is called Duck Hunters. Uh, it's a game for all our community members. They can do some tasks. I don't know some tweets. Uh, I, I cannot disclose all the details, but they get some tasks. They can do that. They get they get eggs and they can uh, later they can change it for ducks uh, they can breed ducks they can do lots of things about uh, nfts it's kind of uh kind of fun way to uh, let users try nfts because nfts on the waves uh, blockchain they're like for example to issue, an, to issue an nft you have to pay only 0 0.001 waves it's around like two cents i yeah. guess uh it's yeah two cents like, wow. less even like even less wow. than two cents uh, and to transfer, for example, NFT, you have to pay the same amount. So just two cents more to transfer it to somebody or to, to, to trade with it. But, so yeah, uh, we just want, with the game, we just want to show that NFTs are pretty cool. Uh, and at the same time to show that uh, it is really, really easy to use them. It is not as expensive as, for example, on the Ethereum network, because uh, last uh, during the last, we had a stream, as I already mentioned, we had we have a YouTube and we had a stream there about NFTs and we have minted an NFT 
uh, with a screenshot of our stream right during our stream. And uh, it, it cost, it, as far as I remember, it was like 30 bucks just to, yeah. to put that NFT on OpenSea. So uh, compared with 30 bucks and uh, like two cents, it's it makes, makes sense to use Wave. So we just want to show that it's really easy, it's really cheap, not like as on Ethereum, yeah. Nice. Well, I'm, I'm personally going to look into it. I, I love the NFT space. I've tested out um, many NFTs on different chains. So I definitely want to look into the Waves one as well and dabble around with that. And I'm sure other users as well, because it's important. If someone's selling like a $600,000 piece of art, a $30 gas fee is not that bad. But if, yeah. you know, if you're looking for NFTs for gaming or collectibles or something that's going to be traded often, you can't have $30 fees. So that's, yes. that's an amazing... Uh, you know, amazing thing. So, and also note to self, uh, if I create any art for an NFT, it will be a duck and I'm going to go sell it on the wave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, you can go to Twitter and fight, fight, fight there. Uh, I guess there is a hashtag duck hunters or ducks hunters, something like that. So you can find a tweet there, which explains how it's going to work, uh, like how you can use NFTs, how you can breed ducks and all this, all this fitness. Awesome. Awesome. And now, uh, you know, thanks for joining us today. It's been a great conversation. We learned a lot about waves myself personally, even though I've been, you know, I've been a fan of the project for a while. Uh, it's great to hear that a lot's happening, a lot's going on. And it's great for people to understand that too, that it's more than just looking at a coin price or token price, which we didn't talk about, but it's been doing great. Um, but, uh, you know, look at what's, what's being built in the ecosystem. So uh, any final words or any, any other thoughts you want before we wrap up? Just to want, just to want to say thank you very much for having me today. It was a pleasure to talk, and uh, I would be happy to answer all the questions from your uh, listeners, uh, from your uh, users. So if you have any questions, feel free to find me on Twitter or on uh, Telegram. Uh, if you find Waves Tech, you can find me in the chat here. So DM me or just ask uh, in any t Telegram chats about Waves. So I would be happy to answer. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks again, Inal. Everyone, make sure you go and look up Inal. Find, you know, look up Waves and follow them. Uh, follow what's going on because it's definitely something you're going to want to keep up with. So uh, thanks again, Inal. Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you. And we will see you all on the next episode.